rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه لم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم يغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin with the praise of Allah We seek His help and we ask His forgiveness Please guide him 
and whether Allah misguides, there is no one that can guide him. And I bear witness, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone and with no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is the slave of Allah and his messenger. For you who believe, have taqwa of Allah as he deserves you to have taqwa of him. And do not die except as Muslims. O mankind, have taqwa of your Lord who created you from a single soul. And from it he created its mate. And from them both came many men and women. And have taqwa of Allah, the one by whose name you ask. And fear Allah with regard to your relatives. Allah is ever watchful over. The guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the worst of things in this religion are the newly invented practices. And all newly invented practices are innovation, and all innovation is misguidance, and all misguidance is in the hellfire, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said. My brothers in Islam, in this khutbah today, I'm going to tell you about something very, very important. Something which is very, very, very dangerous to you, to your iman, to your religion. Something which the people consider to be very small. And in the sight of Allah, it is something very big. They have left the religion of Islam. But before I talk about this topic, we have to introduce something to you. We have to go back to a particular festival on a day. This day is December the 25th. And on this festival, people give gifts. And perhaps they light candles. And they decorate their houses. And they put up trees and they decorate those trees. Do you think you know what that festival is? Wallah, I don't think you know what that festival is. That is the pagan festival of worshipping the sun. Are you going to say Christmas? The origin of Christmas is the pagan festival of worshipping the sun. And it was worshipped long before Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Long before Isa, the Wathaniyun, the idol worshippers, on the 25th of December, they used to put up their trees and they used to hang apples on the trees like these balls that people hang today. And they used to worship the sun and make dua to the sun. And they used to decorate their houses on that day. And they believed that these trees meant that the sun was going to be born again. And some of them, they used to call it the day when the sun is born. Not the sun as in Al-Ibn, the sun as in Al-Shams. The day when the sun is born. Because they used to believe it is the shortest day of the year. The 25th of December, they used to give each other gifts. They used to sing, they used to light candles. And they used to make sajda to the sun on that day. What happened? What happened was when Christianity became corrupted and the message of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam became lost and the people started to worship Isa instead of worshipping Allah. What happened? They took this festival and they took the word sun, shem, ibn, sun. And they said it is the day of the birthday of the sun. And ibn Allah ta'ala Allah amma yakuluna uluwan kabira. High is Allah above what they say. They crossed the sun, which is the sun in the sky. 
One day before, they used to believe this was the day when the son is born. And then they changed it. And they crossed out one word and they wrote another. فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ Woe and curse be to the people who wrote the book with their own hands. And they said that today is the day that the Son of God was born. تَعَالَ اللَّهُ عَمَّا يَقُولُونَ High is Allah above what they say. Some other things you might know on this day, on this day, that thorny plant, that plant used to be worshipped by the Druids. It was such a wethany plant that the churches banned the people from hanging it. And today they hang it in their celebrations. The Norse used to worship all kinds of gods. And the old Anglo-Saxons who used to worship all kinds of gods, they also had a festival on this day. They called it Yule. And today the Christians took their festival as well. And they made the logs and their cakes and all of the things they copied from it. They copied from the Norse people who used to worship many gods besides Allah. More than that, the idea of celebrating the birthday of a was first invented by who? first invented by the pagans before Isa alayhi salam that they used to celebrate birthdays Christianity never had celebration of anyone's birthday not Isa's birthday or anybody else but the pagans in Rome before Isa alayhi salam they used to celebrate the birthday of their noble people so they took it and they took it for Isa and they copied it. The first thing I want to take out of your mind, take out of your mind that Christmas has anything to do with Nabi Allahi Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. It is a pagan festival for the people, the people who worship the trees, the people who worship the stones. They are the people who celebrated this festival. The Christians who used to ban this festival. And until today, there are Christians who do not celebrate this festival. Nothing to do with Christianity. It has nothing to do with Isa alayhi salatu was salam. And we know it is not the time that Isa was born. Cut and we know for sure. Because Allah azza wa jal said in the Quran, that it was said to Maryam alayhi salam, وَهُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ تُسَاقِطْ عَلَيْكِ رُطُبًا جَنِيًّا Shake the date palm and people fall down upon you. People who know dates, they know there are no rutab on the 25th of December anywhere in the world. There are no soft dates on the trees. And it is not the day that has anything connected to Christianity. Rather, it is a day for the people who worship the sun and worship the tree. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum." Whoever resembles and copies a people is one of them. Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَقْلُّ مَنْ كَانَ ظَاهِرُهُ يَقْتَضِي كُفْرِ الْمُتَشَبِّهِ بِهِمْ كَمَا فِي قَوْلِهِ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ مِنْهُمْ He said, the least you can say about this hadith, that it is absolutely haram for anyone to copy something the non-Muslims do. This is the smallest thing. He said, but what is obvious and apparent from the hadith is that whoever copies them has committed kufr. 
They have disbelieved in Allah Azza wa Jal. You copy them in their religious festivals. You are one of them. You will be raised Yawm al Qiyamah as a Wathani worshipper. When you celebrate this day or you facilitate the celebration of this day. And he mentioned Rahimahullah Ta'ala that the reason that our children now today are suffering from the kufr he said the reason for this the asal for this is the disbelievers we started to copy the kuffar so what happens our children grow up to become kuffar and anyone who is working in dawah today, they can see how many of these young kids are coming home. Mom, I don't want to be a Muslim anymore. Dad, I don't want to be a Muslim anymore. Why? Because we are not different from those people. They can't see the difference between the two. We started to copy the non-Muslims and then our kids want to be like them. And if you take the opposite of that, all of the goodness for you and for your children is the sunan of the Prophet wassalam, the shara'i of Islam bringing them to the masjid letting them pray the salah letting them hear the adhan the Eid the day of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha this is what brings your kids to Islam and keeps them close to Islam but if we don't stamp this out facilitating this celebration and supporting it and allowing our children to celebrate it and allowing them in the schools to celebrate it we are the ones who are guilty rather Shaykh al-Islam he said something very powerful he said لا يحل للمسلمين لا من طعام ولا لباس ولا اغتسال ولا ايقاد نيران ولا تبطيل عاده من معيشه او عاده او غير ولا يحل فعل وليمه ولا اهداء ولا بيع ما يستعان به على ذلك لاجل ذلك ولا تمكين الصبيان ونحوهم ولا تمكين الصبيان ونحوهم من اللعب الذي في الأعياد ولا إظهار زينة وبالجملة ليس لهم أن يخلق أعيادهم بشيء من شرائعهم بل يكون يوم عيدهم عند المسلمين كسائر الأيام لا يخصه المسلمون بشيء من خصائصهم وأما بما تقدم ذكره فلا فيه بين العلماء بل قد ذهب طائفة من العلماء إلى كفر من يفعل هذه الأمور لما فيها من تعظيم شعائر الكفر he said it is not permissible for the Muslims to resemble the non-Muslims in anything to do with their celebrations not the food that they eat not permissible for you to have Christmas dinner or Christmas cake nor the clothing they wear it is not permissible for you to wear a Christmas jump to send your children to on the day where they allow them to wear Christmas jumpers nor is it allowed for you to make ghusl on that day nor is it allowed for you to light a fire in celebration on that day nor is it allowed for you to take the day off work if you normally go to work and you, your, your norm, your ada is to go out. It's not allowed for you to stay home on that day. Say if your employer says there is no work today, what can you do? But you're not allowed to stop doing the normal things. Nor is it allowed for you to have a celebration. Nor is it allowed for you to give a gift nor is it allowed for you to sell anything which will help them to do it nor is it allowed for you to give your children permission to play on that day 
nor is it allowed for you to wear decorative or nice clothing on that day. To conclude, he said, it is not allowed for you to make that day special at all. Rather, it should be like every other day. Nor should you single out anything that they give on that day. He said, as for the people, special clothing or special food or special actions or worship or anything in this regard, there is no difference of opinion among the ulama that this is forbidden. Rather, a group of them said that this is kufr. And the person who does this leaves the religion of Islam. Because this is ta'zim sha'air al-kufr. You are honoring the symbols of kufr. You are honoring the sun worshippers. You are honoring the people who worship the graves and the people who worship the trees. For it's not allowed for us to make day special. No doubt, usually we have no choice that the work is off. If you have a chance to go to if you have no chance, no problem. Come to the masjid like normal. Go as normal. Don't give this day any significance. Because it is a day of kufr. It's a day of disbelief. And it's a day of paganism. So don't give it any honor. Don't make it anything special. And don't allow your children. And don't say to anybody I don't celebrate those things. Should I tell you something about my religion and then maybe you can use it as a da'wah opportunity? Wallah, the one who says this, Wallah, I do not know. The one who says to them, Merry Christmas, Wallah. Perhaps Allah will raise him as a kafir. So be very, very, very careful what you say. And be very careful what you do. And be careful what you allow your children to do. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم سائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه يغفر لكم إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We've been talking about the dangers of getting involved in anything to do with the Christmas celebration or any celebration that is outside of Islam. Allowed for us to say to them Merry Christmas. It's not allowed for us to say to them Happy Holidays or I hope you have a good time. What happiness is there when they worship? They worship idols and they worship things that Allah sent no Sultan for. And they say that Allah had a son. And they commit all kinds of Fisk, evil doing, and all kinds of evil they do on that day and the days that come after. And the new year is no different. It's not allowed for us to say to them, Happy Holiday or Happy New Year or any similar to that. All of this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't get involved. But one of the difficult things, my brothers, is you have to have an answer. Because not easy. I'm not saying to you it's easy. People come in the street, say things to you. Maybe, maybe they will not accept me. Maybe they will think they will not come and buy from my shop. You have to have an answer. Someone says to you, you don't have to be rude to them. But you say to them, look, I'm sorry. I'm a Muslim. We don't celebrate that day. And perhaps you can explain to them about the religion. You can perhaps say some kind words to them. But you can't say anything good about what they do on that day. And as for the one who sells his religion for a small price. Like some of the people, they put the Christmas decoration in their shop. 
and they say we have to do this because it brings people to us then it's enough what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ta'isa abdu dinar wa abdu dirham wa abdu al-khamisa Ta'isa wa antakas wa idha shika falan taqash the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cursed the one who worships the dinar and the dirham and he asked Allah to make a problem for him and he asked Allah to make him lose his money and he asked Allah that if he stabbed with a thorn may he not find any relief from his pain because he sold his religion for a dinar and a dirham So for those of you who thought like that, let them go from the khutbah today and go to the place where they put these decorations and take them down. Allah Ta'ala sends upon you khasara in your business, a loss in your business, and worse than that, a loss in your religion. The Prophet wasallam told us that towards the end of time, there will be people like this. For the sake of something from the dunya, he sells it. We have to help each other. We have to remind each other. And I'm sorry that these words are a little bit harsh, but they have to be harsh. Because wallah, you will not understand unless you hear it, how it is. So we have to be a little bit strong on this. And a bit tough on this. I want to say to you, my brothers in Islam, your children, your children. Be careful for your kids. They go to school, everything. Wallah ajib. School doesn't allow any religious. Mostly they don't allow the Muslim children to pray or they make hardship for the Muslim children to pray. But wallah, when it comes to Christmas, they open everything. They make them give presents to each other. They make them wear certain clothing on certain days. They give them certain food, certain things, celebrations they give them for that day. Why? Do you ever think why? Because it has nothing to do with Christianity. Because this is a shaitani, pagan day, pagan festival. And they want your children to disbelieve in Allah. So don't, wallah, give your children any room in this. Let them play on that day to celebrate it. Don't let them have presence on that day. What do you do though? One of the brothers asked someone, he came with a present, he said, I've got a present for you. What shall you do? Say to him, I appreciate your gesture. Around this time of year. It's not allowed in my religion. Perhaps you can keep this gift for me and give it to me on Eid. Or keep this gift and give it to me on a different day that is not one of your festivals. But I can't accept a gift on this day. Because this is going to lose me my religion. And that's the most important thing that you have. ثُمَّ صَلُّوا وَسَلِّمُوا رَعَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُحَمَّدِ بْنِ عَبْدِ اللَّهُ كَمَا أَمَرَكُمْ بِذَلِكَ رَبُّكُمْ فَقَالَ قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير 
والموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم من أراد أبناءنا وأبناء المسلمين وبناتنا وبنات المسلمين بسوء فأشغله في نفسه واجعل كيده في نحره وخذه أخذ عزيز مقتدر وعنزل عليه رجزك وغضبك إله الحق اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم كن لهم ناصرا ومعينا ومؤيدا وظاهرا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه وآلائه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة